First up on my list, the moccasin boot. Now there are two reasons why I've got this boot on the list, but first let me address why a lot of men avoid this boot. So a few years back, this was in style, really popular with the hipster crowd. And some guy saw it for the first time and said, you know what, I'm gonna stay away from that boot. It's a little bit too much. The high contrast between the sole and the upper, it just doesn't look like a normal boot. How would I use it? Guys, let me tell you, this boot has been around for a long time, especially guys that work with their hands, blue collar jobs, they know about this style of boot because it's incredibly comfortable. Why? Because of the toe box. It's got a wider toe box on average than a shoe this size actually would normally have. So if you've got wider feet, if you spend 12 hours, 16 hours a day on your feet, this is the type of boot you want to look at. In addition to that toe box, let's look at the second reason I recommend this for practicality is the sole. Notice we don't have a heel. Because we don't have a heel, we have more surface area on the bottom of our feet. Doesn't seem like much, but it's an extra 10%. And whenever you're traversing really slick ground, tough ground. This is going to be a great hiking boot. It's something that's going to keep you up standing straight. Next up, let's talk suede. So a lot of guys avoid suede as if they think if they get it wet, they get it dirty, it's going to be difficult to clean, if not impossible. Gents, I'm here to tell you suede's come a long way. There's a lot of weather resistant suede out there that's great for boots, even if you're going to be going through snow or sleet. But let's face it, the vast majority of the time, you're not dealing with inclement weather and that's where these boots are going to shine. Because you walk into that room and you're going to stand out because having that bit of texture, having that little bit of a different look, that bit of style on your feet, people notice. And what about suede jackets? Similar to those boots, they're functional. They're going to keep you warm and they're going to help separate you from the crowd. And again, if you're worried about stains or water damage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Simply once a month, treat the jacket if you wear it every single day with a water repellent. And if you do get any little bit of stains on it, simply use a cleaner with a brush. Next up, let's talk about practical timepieces. I'm going to recommend either an automatic or a solar. Now, I don't mean to beat up on quartz watches. I own quite a few, love them. But here's the thing with a quartz watch. Watch. It relies on a battery, a battery that will die when you least expect it and when you need the watch. So I recommend mechanical watches. Mechanical watches run your own energy. So as you're moving your arm around, the watch is winding or a solar watch, which you can charge with the sun if you're going to be outdoors a lot. Another great option. Next up on this list, the Net Gator. Now, if you're not familiar with the Net Gator, you may be familiar with its predecessor, the Silk Scarf and the Bandana. Now, silk scarves, as you may know, were originally used in the military to identify what unit you were a part of. And during World War I in the early days of aviation, they were very popular with pilots because they would protect their neck from the elements. Fast forward to the 1980s, 1990s, we see the emergence of the gator as synthetic materials become much more common. So you have a bit of elastic in this tube material that's very efficient and does the exact job that silk scarves used to do, which is protect the neck from the elements. And for any of you guys that spend a lot of time outdoors hunting, fishing, biking, camping, any of that type of stuff, you know the power of a gator because it not only keeps the sun off of your neck, but it keeps those flies, mosquitoes, and that cold wind from going down and chilling you to the bone. And on the practicality side, the gator beats out the scarf because you can wear it in so many different ways. You can wear it as you would a scarf and just keep your neck warm. You can pull it all the way up and use it as a balaclava. You can pull it on the top of your head, use it as a beanie. You can actually just cover your face, use it as a face mask. So many options. Now, gents, the gators you're seeing in today's video are brought to you by Slick Gator, the sponsor of today's video, and you are going to love what these guys are doing. Now, what separates Slick Gator from all the other gators on the market is their patented pouch system. In a nutshell, this enables you to take a reusable filter or in a pinch, even a paper cloth and stick it right here so that you can breathe easier, know that the air is being filtered if you're using this as a face mask. Now, the deal I got for you over at Slick Gator is basically a two for one. You have the cold weather gator and you have the warm weather gator. This one's really nice because if it's hot outside, you can douse this thing in water, put it on your neck. It will keep you cool. You want to wear this as a face mask. You can do that. This thing is going to protect you from the sun if you're out cycling. The cold weather, this is great if you're going to be out snowmobiling, cross-country skiing, whatever it may be. This is going to insulate your neck and keep you warm. Now, some people may say that gators aren't great face masks. And that's if a gator is designed only to be a gator. What I love about Slick Gator is they are first a face mask, then they're a gator. They designed it so you would have multiple layers so that you can protect others and protect yourself. And gents, let's talk price. When you see that price, I'm going to put the link down in the description. You're going to say this is a no brainer, such a great deal. And I'm proud to bring them to you because I know the owners. I know the founders. Guys, I did a lot of research on this. I can tell you these gators are by far some of the best ones you're going to find out there. I love it because they're functional, hot weather, cool weather, doesn't matter. You want to grab and check out these gators. Gents, 
I'm linking the Slick Gator down in the description of today's video with the best deal you're going to find out there on the web. Use it or lose it. This deal is not going to be around forever. Go check it out. Next up on this list, the cardigan sweater. Now, I don't know why it gets a bad rap. Maybe people associate it with Mr. Rogers, but I associate it with James Bond. I think of something that's a bit more relaxed than a regular jacket, but something at the same time, when you get the right fit, it can look amazing. It's got a nice texture to it. It's got a nice buttoned up front. Yeah, it's all about the fit. It's about wearing it with confidence, getting the right color, and this can easily become a fall staple. Now, if a cardigan's too soft, you want something a bit tougher, look to a Western style blazer. Very similar in style to a normal blazer, but it's the material that's going to separate it. So, this is made from a treated cotton. Most blazers are going to be made from a worsted wool. Worsted wool, luxury material you got to be careful with. A treated cotton, you can be rough with this. At the same time, the style is something that makes it a bit dressier. So, I could, you know, if I'm down in Mexico, wear a bolo tie. It would work with this particular style. Out in Colorado, wear it with a fun shirt. This is a Western style. Now, if you go to the East Coast, what do we see? We see the leather blazer. Very popular. Although, I'm not going to recommend it for everybody. I think the right guy can pull it off in the right situation. Next up, let's talk corduroy. And rule one to wearing corduroy is not to wear corduroy with corduroy. You don't want to be a matching corduroy guy. Although, if you get a corduroy suit, that is totally cool. But I think for the person just starting off, choose a pair of pants. That's a great option. You're going to be able to match it with a wide variety of your existing shirts and bring it in this texture, which by the way, these are called whales. These bumps in here, you're going to see about on average 14 per inch. That's the average. Sometimes you'll see a bit more, sometimes a bit less. Don't worry about that too much. Just know that it's a great way to be able to change things up. But if you're not able to find any corduroy pants, you just don't like the look, don't like the feel, then you can probably spend a little bit less and get a corduroy shirt. It's not going to be probably the most interchangeable piece, but it's a very casual, nice weekend piece that again is going to bring in some texture and change up what you're probably normally wearing. Next up, we've got the sweater vest. And as you can tell, I just threw this right on top of the corduroy. Not sure about this combination, but I will tell you a sweater vest in general. Very underutilized piece of menswear. Jim Trussell made it popular over at Ohio State. Fear the vest. Remember that? But what I love about this is just simply the functionality. It keeps your torso, your chest warm. It gives you freedom of movement in and around the arms. So, if you want to add a little bit of a layer, if you want to throw a sports jacket on top of this, great looking combination. And again, a piece that so many guys just forget is out there. Now, earlier you may have noticed I was wearing a trucker jacket. I decided not to include that because I feel it's a little bit too common. But this variation of the trucker jacket, the Sherpa variation, where basically you've got the fleece lining on the inside, this jacket I'm going to include. Now, there's a wide variety of Sherpa jackets out there and I would highly recommend them. I think they're incredibly functional. They look good. But what I like about the denim type is that it's actually cut pretty short. So, it gives you a lot of freedom of movement if you're going to be working in this jacket. With the denim on the outside, it's very affordable. And this is just a great work jacket. At the same time, I think it's just got a nice rugged look to it. Next up, ditch the baseball cap and go for the flat cap. Now, this flat cap, as you can see, made from a wool material. On the inside, it's insulated, so it serves the purpose of actually keeping your head warm. Now, this flat cap, much lighter weight, more of a three season, spring, summer, fall. If you're going bald, front of your head, back of your head, this right here is going to cover it up. It's going to protect your head from the elements and it just looks good. But if you're just starting off, you don't have to go with anything fancy. Instead, focus in on the functionality. For me, I found one that folds down like this. It will protect my ears, keep my head warm, and it matches my overcoat. So, what video to watch next? How about how to go from an ordinary boy to an extraordinary man? Guys, in this video, had a lot of fun with it. 10 steps to upgrade your style. Go check it out.